G'day campers, how are you? And welcome back to another Thursday Night Live. And tonight we've got a really important conversation and something that I'm truly grateful for the three men sitting with me tonight for because divorce is a big part of our society these days and there's a lot of opportunity around it. Um, not just for the individuals, it's for kids. It has a big impact on a lot of things in life. So tonight we're looking at it from a male's perspective, which is something that I'm really looking forward to bringing to everybody. And I'm gonna challenge this conversation a couple of weeks when we look at the female's perspective. And then I wanna bring it back to a we together perspective where we sit and talk together about what we can learn, how we can support each other and how we grow through that. So tonight I'm very, very grateful to have three men who are all an integral part of my life and people that I actually go to to talk to about things and for them to come here tonight to share themselves, their situations and what their lessons are. I'm so privileged, honoured and grateful that they're here for us. So without further ado, Alan Stevens, how are you, mate? Pretty good, thanks, Scott. Hello, everyone who's listening. Hey, now, rumour like has, rumor has it that you actually have a, um, a little mascot with you these days. If you could just show us your mascot, I'd love to see that. What if, apparently, this little, yes, I think <laughs> very appropriate. But just <laughs> I'm keeping him away from the fire so he doesn't get burned. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you show me these things just before we go on air. So, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Jeremy McBean, how are you, mate? I'm well, Scott. How are you doing? Yeah, awesome, mate. Thank you so much for coming on here tonight and uh, I appreciate you bringing your best and your heart to this. So I really appreciate it. Pleasure to be here, mate. And um, even though I showed you my rash just before you we went on air, I'm not going to show it now, okay? Just so we're clear. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's... Uh, just share with us how you got that rash. I mean... Yeah, no. <laughs> it might come up as part of a story. We'll see how we go. Okay, okay. No worries. Uh, nothing to do with the tinsel, no? <laughs> no, no, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> oh, beautiful. <laughs> well, it's good to have a good kicker before we get into this too. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Jeremy. John, how are you, mate? Very well, thanks, Scott. Yeah, yeah. very look... fairly fresh. So ready. So no mascots to speak of, but <laughs> you look a lot nice and nice and relaxed and yeah. Yeah, I just uh, got out of a hot yoga class, which was a bit um, intense, but uh, happy to be here now and cool. <laughs> no, I love it. Well, look, thank you guys for joining us and thanks for having a bit of a giggle at the start. And We're going to open up tonight with the uh, question and we actually I've upgraded my skills and I'm able to put the questions up so we can all see what's going on. And our first question tonight to each of you is, what are the circumstances that led you to getting divorced? And I'm going to start with you, please, Alan. Okay, well, I've been divorced, married and divorced twice. And in both cases, I, I saw it coming but didn't see it coming. In both my cases, it was uh, my partners who uh, both decided they wanted to leave. And so I think... Uh, first one was 16 years of marriage the second one was only a couple of years of marriage but it was a case of not really connecting you know, we lived together we had three children the first marriage we got the three sons we've lived you know for 16 years together we'd moved house we'd built house or renovated houses and everything together and just seemed to grow apart and that's one of the things that i noticed with a lot of people i talk to men and that they've they're busy doing what they're doing bringing the resources in raising you know raising their children and everything and not being connected emotionally i was there physically but emotionally i think i might have been disconnected because i was involved in a lot of things like surf clubs and other things and my mind was um occupied on uh, those things and wasn't rec recognizing the little things that uh, weren't uh, being looked after it's only in later years i learned things like the five love languages and so i never really knew what my uh, partner's uh, love lang languages were. I only knew what my one was, and it probably wasn't the same as theirs. So that was a bit of a, um, uh, it's been a wake up call. I would have thought that I've learned the first time round, but I had to give it another shot. 
and I've I think I perfected uh, speed marriage into it and out out of it in two years, but uh, it's only in later life that I've started to learn where I've gone wrong. Well, do you mind if we send us over there? Already? I might as well ask you. Looking back at those, you said that the communication you could have done better. Mm. What are the things that you could have done better? Well, I think that when we first find a, a partner, there's the we're attracted, there's the lust, etc. We get together, we get married, we have children, we get caught up in you know, our careers and everything else. But we don't really, or can I say, well, I didn't. I didn't really connect with my wives, and I know that they didn't really connect with me either as far as get to know each other. We should have been more of a, you know, spending time to be friends, not just being partners, but you've got to be friends with your partner. If you're not, you're not going to realise and recognise the things that aren't going right. And so I was oblivious to a lot of stuff. So if I had my time over again, I'd be looking at first building that friendship, understanding my partner, and then knowing how I needed to speak to them so that they were happy as well. Because if you look after your partner and they're happy, you'll always get what you want. So while we were trying, while I was having, uh, getting great sex and everything else, which physical touch was my uh, love uh, language, I was happy. But then when that dropped off, because my partner wasn't getting uh, their love language, because they didn't recognise what it was. I thought, well, mine is physical touch. Theirs must be his physical touch as well. And even though they responded in the early part of the relationship quite, uh, you know, uh, generously in that way, I still wasn't, didn't understand their love language and didn't serve that. And so after a while, they're going, hang on, you're getting uh, your uh, love language uh, uh, satisfied. What about me? But they weren't communicating with me either. I wasn't seeing the subtle signs. As I keep saying in that, um, I, you know, I'll be quite rude here. I've got two balls, but neither of them are crystal. I couldn't work out what was in their minds. So we needed the partner to also uh, share with uh, with me so I knew uh, what the relationship uh, or where it was going and how I could improve it. But not having that communication and asking questions is asking questions and finding out what's really wanted is important. Hindsight's a great thing. And looking back, it's easy to ref easier to reflect on what you did go wrong. But when you're inside the situation, you don't see that. Mm. What were the things that were going on for you that you felt or you didn't, as you said, like you didn't see it coming? So were you just blasé to it? I think, as I said, you know, we only can do so many things in a 24-hour period, you know, some about yeah. sleeping and other things. The end result was I was involved in the surf club. I was getting my career up and running. I, you know, in the early stages, I became the youngest supervising technician in the old uh, uh, telecom uh, 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 network. And so I was working on that. I was uh, raising the three boys. I was part of the surf club. I was his own supervisor of three beaches. I was busy and occupied. And I, I thought my uh, wife was as well. She was a, uh, a nurse. Um, and uh, she had her interests as well. And I thought, well, she's got her interests. I've got my interests but not realizing that, realizing that a lot of her time was going, where's Alan? Mm. How does that feel thinking about that now? What was that? How does that feel thinking about that now? Oh, I've got to the point in life where I look at everything that's happened and go, it happens for a reason. Now, I didn't have the knowledge that I have today. I didn't have the skills that I have today. Mm. So... Now, and I don't blame anybody. I turn around and say to everybody else, look, if you did the best you did with the knowledge you had, you can't be judged for making bad decisions because it wasn't a bad decision based on what you knew. So I was doing what I thought was. You know, I'm a baby boomer. It was, it was uh, go out, create a career, you know, bring the, the resources home, look after the family. And I was doing that and thought that I was doing it quite successfully. It was also be involved in the community. I was doing that with the surf club. So I was active in all those areas, but I was disconnected from the wife while I was doing that. While I'm over here looking at all these other things, I'm not noticing her at home. Yeah. And I don't think we really talked about our work either. So she never really talked about hers. Uh, There's only a couple of times she did with some of the patients that were uh, passing away um, and the impact it had there. And I had some time with her on that side, but 
most of the time we didn't talk about that. We talked about renovating the house, raising the children, all that sort of thing. It was everything outside of us that we talked about, not us. Mm. I'm just sitting with that because like, I'm just looking back at my parents' way in which they were doing things. I think, it, I don't know if it's a, it's a new thing, but we're learning how to use our emotions. So mm. where you are at now is because of the situations you went through. Mm. You know, yeah. so... Yeah, it was in my generation, it was a case of, you know, um, boys don't cry, you know, you suck it up, you know, you're always got to be tough. If things aren't going right, then do more of what you were doing. So if things aren't happening in the house, then go out and earn more money, you know, bring more resources in, which actually causes a bigger problem. Because if the problem was that, yes, you you might be as tight on finances and things like that, but if the emotions aren't being looked after, that's where the real problem is. So you go out and you bring in more resources and you think you're looking after the family because one of the problems with uh, men is that we go out, build the resources to bring back so we're away from the love of our fam family and we're building the resources to give our family love. It doesn't work. We've got to have a certain amount of time with our partners. We've got to be emotionally there. We've got to be physically there as well. So we've got to find that fine balance between the career and all the rest but i was studying i was you know you know doing looking at leaving telecom to getting redundancy going into a different career which meant going back to the university doing an engineering degree and while i was focused on all of that i really I, the, where i thought i was by doing all that i'd make the uh, marriage better i didn't it just made us more distant so one day she just said to me you know uh, i want to go and find myself um and uh, can you help me pack my bags well, yeah, that must have had a big impact on her because she left the three boys for me to look after. No, four, eleven, and twelve. So obviously, the disconnection that I didn't pick up her emotions and everything else, and her feeling so disconnected. That was why she um, walked out on the boys as well. And by the way, I don't blame her for that. Okay, explain that. Well, one of the things is I know that for all the other males that I knew who were divorced they were out on friday nights they were chasing uh, other women uh they were trying to uh, get over their the tough feelings i was going through by being the man and being out there and really pushing and everything whereas i had the three boys to raise they were 4 11 and 12. so that was the gift that she left me with you know raising the boys kept me on the straight and narrow because when she and i first met back in those days drinking was a a big uh, part of social life and quite often we you know had very heavy nights of drinking and um uh so i had the boys all i had that had to change and she left me with the the best gift was was uh, three boys who i love and respect yeah. and, and that's why like... i changed my attitude in the marriage towards her because that's what our union created What was the realization like when you realized that you had to bring up three boys on your own? I don't think I really stopped long enough. Um, I think I've, things were happening so fast. I was you know, organizing my own redundancy out of telecom, which I hadn't told her about up to that point. Um, that was to uh, you know be able to go off and go into another career. Um, we just moved to a property that she wanted to move to and we're living in a caravan and we're about to level the land and build a house. So all of these activities were going on. I was oblivious to it leading up to it. And then after that, it was, okay, got to come back to civilization from the country, back into the city with the boys, get them into a regular school where I could get uh, childcare and things like that. So I was just focused on, again, back into um, uh, work mode and work, working within the family as just as much as I was in the uh, building a career. Because I was taking redundancy, I'd also started a business. So I just filled my life up with as much activity, which numbed me so I didn't have to think. Yeah. I can really appreciate that. And I'm proud of you for stepping up. Thank you. Take, taking on the boys because that's so important. You know, well, the good thing about it is I have a great relationship with them, which a lot of men who have, um, who, 
have either, or have either left or have been pushed out who aren't with their children, you know, my heart goes out to them because of that disconnection they got from their uh, kids. That's bloody hard. Mm. So I would, you know, as far as I'm concerned, my divorce was um, uh, was was a gravy train as far as uh, the process I had to go through. And I, you know, I look at other men and I just go, my God, you know, they're doing it really tough. I was dead lucky. Thank you for saying that that way. Because hmm. it's very easy to just put the blame on and just get into hmm. that game. We're just getting up and going again. Hmm. I honor that. Thank you. Mm. So, right, John, I'd like to ask you the same question, if that's okay. Mm. I think to start with, <clears throat> when discussing this, there's it's important to have remember the um, you know, the the respect and compassion and empathy that you know for the relationship, and um, so that when yeah, when I do get into the circumstances, it doesn't sound like blame, but it's just what happened. Um, yeah. And I, I, you know, it was both of us in there yeah. trying to navigate, you know, a, a situation um, and a relationship. And so for me, um, I actually got married late. I didn't get married till I was 42. So it was... Um, to be honest, I, I, marriage wasn't even on my radar, um, let alone, let alone a long-term relationship. I'd never really been in a long-term relationship before, um, for whatever reason. And we were together for 10 years and married for five. And <clears throat> the way I have learnt to look at it from a, masculine feminine polarity perspective is that i wasn't looking for a partner and i got chosen from the beginning um and later on that that became an issue in that she saw me as more of a potential than i i kind of went in there you know fairly naive um i was i was happy to to be chosen it was a good ego boost um and i'd say i mean <laughs> to be honest it was we were both doing a stand-up comedy course and they picked us to work together to write together for the six weeks of the comedy course and by two, day two we got we were sort of, you know, right into it. But it's and um, there was a lot of chaos and drama in those early days. And I felt almost like I was um, saving her from a situation. So the dynamic for me was coming in as a saviour. And that kind of played out in various aspects either you know subtly or explicitly for the next 10 years mm. uh, and that's I, I chose to do that and that's what made obviously you know i was looking for that we're, we're all looking for something in a relationship whether it's you know and it's not always um you know obvious and um and she was happy to be, I guess, looked after. And um, and for me, I guess over time we were we were great friends. We had a lot of fun together, but we just had no direction. We had no goals. We didn't know if we wanted to have kids together. We never came to that conclusion. Um, I, not thinking I would ever get married, had not even thought of kids either. Not, not that way at the time. So when she was here about it, 
it just never happened. So there was, there was kind of not that keeping it together. Not that it's you know it's it's the be all and end all for happy marriages, but um, in in a wider sense, we just we didn't have anything really to work towards. Um, I was the main breadwinner, um, which you know as, as a male, I I I know when you have a family, that's that's the expected, well, you know, the, the role that the male takes on, you know, the hunter and gatherer. But um, from her side, she, she, she wasn't a mother. So I, I was kind of just providing for her and myself just to exist and, and have some fun, you know, go on holidays and that sort of thing. So, um, what what brought it to a head? Um, my actually, yeah, probably started around when my father died, and and I just realised we had completely different values. Um, my mine were very family orientated, and I, um, amongst other issues, but that that um, just brought a lot of stuff to the fore um <laughs> when uh my father and mother had booked a cruise around the mediterranean for his 80th he didn't actually make it to his 80th so my mother asked me and i took my ex-wife with us um out of well I, th I thought i should ask but um i did ask and we booked the cruise Six weeks before the cruise, we went into intensive counselling where we actually separated and <laughs> had no contact. And then the six weeks came up and all of a sudden we were living in a cruise cabin for the next four weeks, which was um, which was pretty intense with the mother-in-law across the hallway. So that was, that was um, an interesting situation. And... Um, yeah, so I think I think it sort of it gradually declined, um, and we were you know we still had that aspect of friends and and um, we had a lot of fun together, but it was just there was not much substance be beneath that, and we never really made a decision to where what the possibilities could be. Um, so we ended up living. We actually, I took long service leave from work in Brisbane and we moved out to Mullumbimby near Byron Bay for, because um, she wanted to always sort of live down there. And we ended up on a farm, 200 acre farm in the middle of nowhere, again, in our shit. <laughs> so, you know, it was do or die. And, and, you know, we lasted about six months down there in that situation. Um, and you know it kind of fizzled out but i think it just came to a natural end and a conclusion that you know one of us or both of us weren't not willing to budge but i mean we, we'd had a good crack at it and there was issues there which got highlighted in in you know that pressure cooker um situation so you know i've i've learned a lot about myself um i was certainly not you know <laughs> the shining star or perfect or anything but um we we both had things that we just couldn't seem to get past and because there wasn't children involved it kind of made it a, a an easier decision not easy but um you know, if there was, I would have probably fought for it more um, because I think she ideally, going back to the start where she chose me, would have would have ideally liked, liked me to change enough to, to want to be in it more. Um, so, yeah, it, it kind of, I think it was... It was disappointing when it happened, but I think it was it was inevitable. So, 
yeah, that's the that's the gist of it. Story. Was it a mutual decision? Sorry. Was it a mutual decision? Um, well, she'd actually tried to leave me a couple of times, and being <laughs> being a man who doesn't like to fail, I kept. I, I did, you know, promise I would, you know, change and, and be the person she wanted me to be. But I just, I was pushing shit uphill, to be honest. I, I don't think I really wanted to be there towards the end. And I was just doing it to save face. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think um it was kind of mutual i mean she put the ultimatum on me and i just I, I i from saying no let's let's have another crack so many times i just had to say yeah okay let's call time it's like you know but then she i i felt that she wanted me to fight for it more but i, I kind of realized that you know it was a done deal which was, you know, we were great friends and, and disappointing and it was the end of a relationship. But the relation, the friendship was more than the relationship was. And, you know, I've, I've got plenty of good friends. I didn't need, you know, a friend to live with <laughs> kind of thing. So, you know, it was, we, we, we you know, I think we both... We both had a, a really good go at it and, you know, I was always looking at how I could improve and, and everything, but I think, um, yeah, it was just, it was just not to me, not meant to be. I really appreciate that, John. Thank you. Mm. I have some more questions about that after, if that's okay. More thing. Thank you. Jeremy. Same question. What are the circumstances that made you to getting divorced? Difficult question, this one. Um, um, I guess because relationships are complex. So what brings a relationship together is complex and what leads a relationship to end is complex as well. So it's quite difficult. It's interesting reflecting as John and Alan both answer. I mean, the, I was thinking the, the dinner party answer to the question is we grew apart. That's the kind of the factual, I mean, the, the not factual, it's probably the, the, not the one to sound at all blamey, but the, what happened is she left. That's what happened. The circumstances is my ex-partner decided she wasn't happy in the relationship and ended it. And I was much to mind, like I fought very hard to try and keep it. So that, that was the, that was two and a half years ago. But um, but there's plenty of backstory to that moment. And hearing Alan and John talk is like, I think that both nailed kind of two highlight points that I'd say. Like, and John talks about the kind of relationship dynamics. I think that was a, when I reflect on my relationship and my marriage and what led to it ending was we had unhealthy dynamics going on within the relationship. And when you can sit back and look at it, I can reflect on that. It's complex, all that stuff, you know, it's what we both need as individuals and love languages like Alan was talking about and stuff that we bring to the table and um, role modeled through our parents and their relationship and all this kind of stuff that I've been thinking about, like looking at the way my dad presents his love and the relationship he has with my mum and how I learnt that in the house and the stuff that therefore I brought into my relationship with my ex and vice versa on her family. It led to this uh, melting pot, I think, of challenging waters, you know, you know, look, challenging dynamics under the surface in our relationship, the coming together of those two people and it's a power imbalance and poor communication styles and defensiveness and lots of stuff coming off the, the sort of um, these relationship dynamics. And the more, the more you can be aware of that kind of stuff on hindsight, the more if you could have both been aware of that, the better I think it would have been, you know, hard when you're in it though, really hard. Um, and the other the other thing I reflect on is what um what Alan talked about the kind of themes around communication and um and 
yeah, what I think we didn't do well was really communicate our needs to each other in, in within safety to say, look, this is what I need, whether it's this particular love language. And that, and the person receiving that piece of information, like we would become defensive. You quickly kind of look to, no, I meet that need in this way, or, you know, it would be almost a fight rather than a, a, a really want to seek to, to hear. So, yeah, the, the, the circumstance, we grew apart because we, we, our needs weren't being met. Um, and I think that's because the, the wall was up. We weren't speaking with real honesty and vulnerability about, look, I'm not feeling this isn't met. And do you know how that, without it, but they're being all a defensive response both ways and so i look back on, on our relationship and think, yeah that leads that's what grows you apart when you're not able to speak openly and speak your truth and your vulnerable truth not necessarily about the next work project or the next thing with the kids it's what's going on for us as individuals and, um yeah i think we we weren't good at that so in, if i was to have a future relationship i'd be working really hard on setting up that safety between the two Yeah, I appreciate that because it's the future relationships that are the key to this because knowing all three of you personally, knowing the self-development that you're taking upon yourself in order to be the best versions of yourself, that's a big, a big thing. And it's something that I'm actually really proud of all three of you for because you're not settling on this, no, that was her fault, this was... It really hurts. This is not comfortable, but I'm going to look at myself before I go anywhere else with another partner. And I really want to honor the three of you for that because that's, that's one of my main things about bringing you in here tonight because you're not guys that just sit around and have the blame and put all that energy onto the kids or to other people within your family groups you're taking responsibility for you. And it's not easy to do that. And it takes time. It's not a quick process because you've got to reflect upon everything. So no, it's not, for yeah, that's got, I'm pretty good at blaming. I'm good at that. Uh, <laughs> so, um, it's in the mix, don't worry about that. It's still, it's around. Uh, but working hard on myself, like you're saying, it's been, and talking about the dynamics like we've chatted about, for me, it's been, I mean, I've been unstable, emotionally, really. It's been the biggest thing I've gone through in my life without question. And so for me, I've been wanting to stabilise so I don't take unstable dynamics into another relationship. So that's a thing for me to try and become, learn what I can, like I think you're saying, like, what can I learn out of this? I went into my therapist session once and just... The whole session is like, what can I learn? We, we did a whole lot of work about how do I get through, you know, what, where do, what, what's my next step, how do I deal with the emotional pain and lots of that kind of stuff. But there was a session on what can I learn, what will help me see the stuff I'm not seeing. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's really important. So these things that are within us don't play out in the rest of our life, all of our, whether it's a romantic relationship, a family relationship, a work relationship, these my name is Clay. I've been working pretty hard too. Yeah, it was Jeremy, Jeremy said about, you know, you know, knowing more and going into another relationship. The thing to remember too is that if we do that, there's no guarantee that that relationship's going to work either. We can be the best versions of ourselves, but our partner, if they, you know, on a different pathway, if they're not growing at the same rate, they're going faster or they're growing slower or they're growing in a different direction, it's not going to work. So with communication, we first of all got to know ourselves. We've got to be comfortable in who we are and also working to be the best versions, as you say, of it, as ourselves. We need to, and part of that means that we've got to communicate better. We need to actually ask our, our partners to see where they're at and where they're, you know, how they're growing. Where I'm going, is this where they want to be? You know, because they might go, well, I don't really want to be going to all that person with self-development and everything else. I want a better relationship, but I want to be able to do these things. You know, again, it's, well, it takes two to tango, as they say, and marriage is very much a partnership. There's the communication is going to be the, one of the most important things and equally important is that personal development as well. Because if it doesn't work, you need to be the best version of yourself so you can uh, work through that. 
what I've learnt over uh, the two divorces and since what I've learnt since then, I know I'm a completely different man. But if knowing what I know today, would that have made those relationships better? Who knows? Probably not. Because if my partner hadn't changed and they were going down their pathway, it still would have been the same thing. I might have been a little bit more angry about it. I think I've done all this work on myself and they haven't noticed it. And I think I'd get over that pretty quickly as well too. I just realise now that some people come into your life for a long time and some people just come in as a pathway they pass by. They may come back into your life again. I've had a lot yeah. of ex-partners who have still friends. They've gone out of my life, they've come back again, but as friends because I'm now a different person. I know they're a different person as well. Yeah, look, I really like this. Go, John. I was just going to say, like, what came up for me just then is the the relationship leading up to marriage is is really a discovery period, and think, do I want to work, live with this person, etc., and for the rest of my life, so, sort of thing. The marriage doesn't mean you can now relax, and you know take it easy, everything's good. You know, we're, we've, we've had the big day, you know, um, we're in paradise now. It's a dynamic thing still. You've still got to work at it. Yeah. And, you know, it doesn't mean that people are not going to grow apart. I mean, there, there, there is a lot of energy in what making sure you grow together. You have similar values and um, you're willing to compromise um but i think a, a wedding day that doesn't mean that you can just sit on the couch and go oh thank god now we're... <laughs> that, that idea of, of um you know we're 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 all good and you know it's 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 a living thing it's a, it's a dynamic thing that needs needs constant um, review and, um, you know, of where you're both at, not just whether you've got kids, but where, where are you, where's your head at? What, what are you, are you changing your views in some way about the world or yourself or it's just, um, and I, and I think people can get complacent. Um, I'm, I'm saying that from my perspective, <laughs> even though I was, I was growing and doing you know just as by default i would i loved you know trying to improve myself but i wasn't i'm not saying she wasn't improving but we were improving in different ways that what that word being acknowledged by yeah, the other I see, I see myself in that as well from the comments you've just made it's um but i think it's not so much that we we still you know we still have to do you know work at it it's a case I think we have to work more at it because mm. when we first are together, we've got all the, the glitter, all the, the, the shiny stuff that attracted us in the first place. And that makes it quite easy at that point. But once we start to get used to their traits and then we realise that there's another side to their traits and we start recognising the other side because the other side, the, the upside, we've had it so much that it's become, you know, we're, we're familiar, too familiar with it. So now we start noticing the other stuff and so they've changed and realise they haven't changed, we've just become more aware. So at that point, we, I think we need to put more effort into it in working on that relationship, and especially when the kids come along. I guarantee the dynamics are going to change a hell of a lot and that's not just putting one child in there doesn't just give you a little extra. It, it's exponential. Yeah. I think it's really interesting, right, because... I think we live in a very complex world these days. I think we get the opportunity to become these amazing human beings and we're really learning about ourselves a lot these days. I feel the fundamentals of marriage just listening to this conversation right now, but we need to be challenged. Because you get married, great, we're married, we're together. Where's the planning beyond that? Hmm. You know, so I'm just listening to that. And maybe that's a, a question for a future panel because beyond marriage, what do we do? How do we support each other? How do we grow together? You know, because I'm a firm believer if we 
in any relationship, be it a friendship, be it, be it a work relationship, you have to build the road together. Because if you don't build the road together, you build your own roads and you end up in different destinations. So it's about the working on the same road, you know, continuing. So I'm going to jump over a little bit because I've got some more questions. Um, I just appreciate we're moving through time because this is a great conversation, right? Because it's, it's real. It's the lessons. It's the growth through. So talking about that, what has been your biggest lesson? After going through a divorce, what has been your biggest lesson? I'm going to start with you, John. That's okay. Hmm. It's a good question. Um, I think, to be honest, to be honest, <laughs> in relationships about what's going on um, and, and about the way you feel and, um, and nipping that, not yeah, trying to nip that in the bud way ahead of time. Um, and always, I guess, not taking the relationship for granted and actually looking into yourself and saying, what am I putting into this? What am I getting out of it? And just being aware, as Alan said, and honest about where things are going and, and um, doing your best. But I think... Um, yeah, I, I think it's, for me, going into another relationship, I'm, I'm one spit and twice shy <laughs> in that respect. Like I, I have my eyes open a lot more. And, and step one is me actually choosing, deciding what I want and having the guts to ask for it. And and that's, a, that's the best start to a relationship I can, I can, I can hope for, not just falling into one out of need for, you know, companionship or, or whatever. So I think, you know, a lot of my time in the last few years has been taken up, focused on family since the divorce. So I haven't, you know, I've been doing a lot of work on myself since then, but I haven't been making it a priority. To, to do that and I'm still working out you know being more clear on what I want and what I'm committed to and what I can commit to and what I you know I think commitment was an issue for me anyway <laughs> before that so I don't know if I was fully in there which is a bit shit to say but looking back on it um, I just went for the ride and, and we had a lot of fun together. As I said, we were great companions, but, um, as far as intimate partners, there just wasn't that chemistry. So that needs to be there. And, um, just a, a similar value set and, um, goals for the future. So. Um, and plus, for me, to be honest, I just got married because I thought I, you know, that was what she wanted. Um, and I didn't fully decide or, or have my, you know, it, it could have been, well, we break up or we get married. We got married. And it just seems to be the next thing to do. So, um, unfortunately, and I hate to say that because usually the women or the females really, in most cases, want the marriage, um, that, that institution, that security. And um, I don't feel I was able to provide that because I wasn't, you know, right in myself. So I need to be 
whether I get married or not is again it's it's not that important to me my the importance is that I have a relationship that I'm committed to and is of my choosing and that I can put everything my whole self into the institution marriage I'm not religious um, and I've been married and I, I to be honest I don't see myself really doing it again um but who knows <laughs> I, may no, look, I appreciate, appreciate your honesty there you know like it's it's i can feel your your effort in working on yourself and, and it takes a lot of effort to actually get to the point where you got to sit down and work out your values so you've got common values and I feel like your next relationship if you choose to go into it there's going to be a lot more effort put into the questionnaire if you like of what you want in life and how do you want it and this is what I want is this are you okay to be a part of that well it'll, it'll definitely be a lot more conscious <laughs> yeah. I mean the last one as I said was chaotic from the start and involved a lot of drugs and drink so it's not a it's not a great start to a relationship and i've moved beyond that so that's that's not a value of mine anymore so that one example so yeah. no i appreciate that because that's a lot of relationships do stuff like that mm. drug alcohol mm -hmm. fueled and you know it's 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 a is it is it a real thing is it a tangible thing there's a full there's a lot of lust and everything around that is it tangible well, it's not sustainable, no. And and we tried to sustain it in a mm -hmm. decreasing way over the marriage, but it was still there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was a red flag. Mm -hmm. I really want to say thank you for being open and honest about that. That's that's, I really appreciate and honour that, John. Thank you. And I'm to be honest, I'm I'm just discovering this myself as I'm talking. And it could be, you know, some of it could be, you know, out of left field or not even true. But I'm, it's my, it's what comes to me at the moment. And you know, I, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I wonder if she's ever going to see this. But if she does, she might get a bit more insight into an understanding of what what actually contributed to it, which hopefully will help her as well. Because I wish her no ill, Ill will. So no, it's come from a place of love, and it came from a place of honesty from your heart, and that for me is a great step forward. Honest, honest with yourself. Yeah. Hmm. Which is exactly what you just talked about at the start of it. Being honest, do you know what I mean? So that I love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Thank you so much, John. So, Jeremy, same question to you, please, mate. I want to um, firstly thank you, Scott, for not asking me that question first because it's a bloody hard question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take the fall. <laughs> thank you, John. Excellent work. Because uh, it's complex. Like, what's been the biggest lesson? I think, and I've been, mean, why, why is that so hard for me to answer? I reckon it's because I'm still learning. There's so many lessons in it. Is part, like, there's a lot and across lots of different levels and I'm still I'm still learning. So if I find this a hard question or answer, I guess if one thing came, the, big, the biggest thing that comes to me for it, and sounds odd, it's that I am okay, is the biggest sort of lesson that I've had to learn. And that is there's a huge heap of shame mixed in with my divorce. You know, that fought for it blindly. I wasn't listening to my ex-partner and her needs in lots of different ways because for me it just had to work. It had to work. Um, but to go through it and be able to say for my kids, like, they're okay, you know, and, they're, and them being in two houses. Um, and, you know, like, life goes on kind of thing. And so the biggest lesson is, like, I had someone, how could she not love me? Or at the moment of impact, I was like, how could she leave? How could she not love me? How am I not lovable? All of those questions I had to, to wrestle with. Um, but to work through that, I guess the biggest lesson is through all that, I'm okay. I'm a divorced dad and I'm okay. You know, the life goes on and I'm still Jeremy and you 
I'm still an okay bloke. You know, it's lots of things to work on, but that's been the biggest lesson, you know, to kind of tackle that sense of disappointing my kids and failure and shame and all that gnarly stuff. Uh, but that's, that's been the biggest one, I think. I'm really proud of you. Thanks, mate. You know, if I had the microphone for one more second, I'd say to anyone out there who's experiencing a really hard time, the best thing that's helped get me through it is thinking just one day at a time, just one moment at a time. And so, yeah, if there's anyone out there listening, thinking what they're going through, it, they're missing their kids. A lot of guys out there are missing their kids and they're finding they're really tough. The thing that really got me through the point of impact was just this mentality of just one day at a time. So in terms of the biggest lesson, the biggest tool I've taken forward is that, and I repeat it to lots of different people, it's just that you're yeah, going through a really tough time right now. And I was given advice and I was just both there, quite professional, just like get through tomorrow, get through the next day. Like, yeah. And it's true, things get easier. The load, the waves are still there. The waves of grief are still there, but the load gets lighter. Um, so that's the other one, given there was a space I thought I'd jump into it. So the other lesson is the waves of grief, the pain is there, but it's much less over time. You, you grapple with it. So if there's anyone out there, that's what, I, that's what I would pass on to anyone really hurting. It's just one, let's take every moment at a time. And it shit sorts itself out. It'll be all If you are going through it at the moment, take heed in that. It's not about today, just do one day, get through today. Start tomorrow, one step forward. Because you're worth it. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for the Alan. space. Ah. <laughs> Alan. First of all, say thanks to John for taking one for the team by answering that question first and Jeremy for uh, your reply as well. I think for me the, the biggest lesson was that um, I don't think I really knew what love was. It was what we were taught, you know, get married, have children. It was a recipe that I was following. And when my second uh, wife left, I was devastated. I was angry and everything else. But it was about six years later, I was sitting, um, I was at a, an opening of a, um, a health centre and her, uh, one of her old flatmates sidled up beside me and started chatting and was telling me how she'd finally found this guy of her dreams and she was really happy. And in that moment, I never felt so warm and so happy in my life. I then realised that I was happy that she had found the person that she was looking for and I went, ah, that's what love is. If you really love somebody, you want to put them first. It's it's letting them move on if they need to and not having the anger with them and everything else. Be able to sit back into that position and go, yep, I did love them, but that wasn't uh, meant to be. And if I love them, I'll let them go. And that's what I learned out of that as the biggest lesson for me. But on the uh, the side of um, would I get married again, a lot of people say, is there going to be a number, a number three? And I go, well... I've just follow um, Rod Stewart, as he said, when he was asked if he'd have a number three, he said, no, I'll just find a woman I don't like and buy her a house. Get over and done with really straight away. <laughs> but, yeah, all jokes aside, the thing is that I've learnt that it's a partnership. You need to understand your partner. As John was saying before, you need to be able to tell them, be able to tell them exactly what you want. You need to be able to discuss that. And you've got to put their needs in there as well not in front of yours, but beside yours. Because one of the things I'd said to my first, my second wife, she was much younger than me, and I said, well, you know, I don't want to live without you. You know, because I expected that I would die first because I didn't want to live with the pain of uh, her dying first and me then having to put up with that. And I thought, hang on, where's the love in that? If I really loved her, and not that I wanted to, you know, end her life, but I would like her to live for a long time, but to live... Long, uh, less than I do. So I don't, you know, I only want to be five minutes longer so I can feel that pain and get it over and done with. But I wouldn't want her to go through that pain if she really loved me. 
I wouldn't want her to go through that. So it's realizing that putting their values forward, but putting them beside yours, not behind you, not so far in front of you, you put them on a pedestal that then you put them in a place where they can't um, respond because you put them up so high. And, you know, most people don't like being uh, put on a pedestal and with everybody around. They want to be equal. They want to be with you. You can't hold hands when one's behind or in front of the other and you can't hold hands when one's on a pedestal and the other one's on the ground. And it's being able to walk through life together, have those conversations. If you do have children, then be able to co-parent. Now, that was what, something I learned that I had to do was when I separated from my first wife was to um, get to an arrangement where we could co-parent the kids and not bag each other because doing that, the kids hear that, they're hearing that half of them is no good because they're made up with a combination of both of us. So I've learned not just the relationship side of it, but the impact that relationship has on those around us. So any one uh, lesson? No. Heaps of lessons? Oh, yeah. I think I think that's the opportunity, John. I'll just bring you in. John. Yeah, just what Alan was saying just hit me with... Um, I just wanted, I, I want both of us to be happy and we weren't happy. Sometimes you do have to let them go and it's hard. And even though we were great friends, I had to make the decision, no matter how hard it was, that we couldn't continue the friendship because the friendship was the relationship. And, you know, maybe there's always going to be one person that's still pining for it or hasn't let it go. So the best thing you can do to love them is let them go and let them move on and and find happiness whatever their version of happiness is because it wasn't you know there may have been happiness for a big part of the marriage but then it you know things changed so you've got to actually call it when when things are irreparable or irretrievable and i just think that's you know it is sad that it's over, but things end. And you just want to wish the best for them and allow yourself to to find, you know, a better a better life or or um experience. So however that looks, whether it's being single, <laughs> who knows? But as you said, uh -huh. in letting somebody go, if you're angry with them and you keep that anger there, you're the one who suffers. So being able to learn how to let them go frees you up to you know to feel better about yourself. So I think that's an important yeah. issue I've learned as well. It, it opens you up to actually find mm. someone else. That's you're not it. hanging on to that. Mm. So it, it, it's, it's almost like a death. There's a grieving process. But mm. You need to let it, you know, let it, let it go. Yeah, I, I think the one thing that is blatantly obvious tonight is the fact that everybody has different, different circumstances that they go through. So we have to appreciate that everybody has different scenarios that happen through divorce. But the one thing that I heard tonight over and over and over again communication, connection, need to keep growing through a relationship and be honest, mm. honest with you. Yeah. No, I, I think, and I think, I think it's, it's not about divorce being failure. It's just no. the next, it's, it's the new paradigm of the relationship. Mm. Yeah. I mean, Ideally, we'd all be together forever. Right? Yeah, well, it's the same as work, isn't it? If we work for an organisation, you know, we move on to another organisation when that organisation no longer fits our needs, you know, to grow. We're not failing by leaving that first organisation to go to the next one, are we? So we should have that same attitude to our relationship if it's not working and, you know, we can find the best way to uh, separate for both of us and then we're both moving forward. So it's not a, a, a failure at all. 
is part of the growth to the next level that we're going to be you know, moving to. Mm. Exactly. On that, then, I've got no time left, but I would like to ask. <laughs> I would like you each to ask you just one little thing. If you could whisper to yourself, the younger self, before you got married, one sentence, what would that sentence be? And Jeremy, you're going to love copying that one first. <laughs> okay. Um, I think first thing to mind for me would be what has been talked about tonight. First thing I'd say to myself, the pre-marriage me, younger me, nothing is certain. There is no guarantee. Um, and I remember thinking when I was dating girls, when I walked down that aisle, I used to say to people, when I walk down that aisle, I'm going to know. Like, I'm like, hang on, I was the one walking down the aisle. She walked down the aisle. You know what I mean? When we, when we, <laughs> the day we're getting married, um, we're locking in. I was really kind of, this is it. It's it for life. My mum and dad are still together. So for me, the model was together forever. And I guess I would have taken pressure off a lot of what Alan and John have just said. Really listen to the message from those guys. Why weren't you guys around 30 years ago? That would have been handy. That's, <laughs> uh, that's what I would have been whispering in the young, younger Jeremy's ear. You go, it's, you know, nothing's guaranteed. It's a leap of faith. That's what love is. Um, and it's not like all that stuff. It's not failure. It's, it's, it's some uncertainty and that's okay. That's a, that's a good thing. That's what I would say. Does it still apply 30 years on? Yeah. Totally, but don't go dating me. I'm a nightmare to date because I'm jumpy as hell. <laughs> 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 oh, that's a good advertisement. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll just cut that bit out and put it on his Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> Sorry, luck. You didn't know you were actually auditioning for your, um, your dating yeah, yeah. Uh, Profile. Yeah, yeah. that between exactly. us. All of us are missing, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, I love it. Thank you, Jeremy. Alan? I think, um, well, look, nothing's, uh, you know, the, the comment that Jeremy said about nothing is certain. My first wife asked me to marry her twice. I thought she wouldn't ask me a third time, so I asked her. I had the same feeling that we're going to have a a marriage that was going to be, you know, it was, this was it. She was the woman of my dreams, the soul mate, and it was going to be forever. And I think that uh, my message to my younger self would be that nothing is forever, but you can make it uh, last longer the more that you know about yourself and the more you know about your partner, and that requires communicate, mutual respect and communication. Beautiful. Do you still need to tell yourself that now, you reckon? Do I what, sorry? Do you still need to tell yourself that now? No. And uh, as, uh, as the others have said as well, having, you know, needing a relationship, I don't need a relationship. That's one of the things that would, well, that would be one of the things I would have uh, told myself when I was younger. So I was always looking to fit in. I was always looking for a relationship. And I realised that the relationship that was most important was the one that I had with me. That's the one I've got at the moment. I don't need to be in a permanent relationship with somebody. You know, I, I love women. We've got, you know, look at the Campfire Project. Look at the women we've got around us. There's some gorgeous souls in there. You know, I enjoy their company. I enjoy the, the, I feel the warmth of their love and everything else every time I'm around them or even when I think about them. That means more to me than being in a relationship. It's the community that we've created that uh, really feeds my soul. I appreciate that. Hmm. Thank you, Alan. John, same question. I think it's about being conscious about what marriage actually means and is, and not just doing it by default, just actually going into it with your eyes open and, and, uh, Invest, you know, asking this, asking the question, the way the relationship been, has been now, mm. um, 
is this the way you know do i want to continue this into the future in in that box because it's almost you know as, as alan said you sort of all of a sudden locked into this this idea that um you need to be together forever which mm -hmm. yeah ideally but often we see it doesn't work that way because there's already issues before the marriage so um don't don't get married just because you think it'll fix something um it's um it's a big step and a big commitment and um yeah it, both people need to really want it and and know what it means because i to be honest i didn't have a good um example of of marriage i mean my parents were together for 50 years but the way their dynamic was not a dynamic that i would have chosen you know to marry someone and, and replicate and you know you, you need to be aware of what you actually want and are not just doing based on what you've seen from your parents or you know so that's that's a lot to whisper into one ear but <laughs> <laughs> maybe i'll try the other one as well <laughs> but i love it right because mm. it is complex mm. you know, and to give all the advice in the world would be fantastic but the reality is everybody's had hindsight to reflect on that. And that hindsight is the gift that you're giving future generations because that's where we get to learn. Mm. We're learning to be better humans. We're learning to respect each other. No matter what happens in your relationship, if you go, if you go through a divorce, at some point you did love and want to be with each other. Mm. Honor that. Yeah. So I'd say to anybody who was feeling they need to be in a relationship, if you have that need, then you probably shouldn't be in one. You're not ready for it. And mm -hmm. when you feel that you don't need to be in a relationship, that's when you're going to be more open to it. And it's more likely to work at that point. Mm. You're going to do it for the right reason then, not for the selfish reason of, or the feeling of, of lack. Because that's the way I went into my first one, and somehow I went a bit well the way I went into my second one. Mm. I'm a slow learner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I love it. And look, look, we're well over the hour tonight, and I'm mm. really not that fast. But I just, if we can take something out of tonight, which I know you, you can just by listening to this, because it's, it's, it's men talking about a painful situation in each of their lives that are taking the lessons to grow from it. And I think that's the key to our whole existence. If we continually grow, we will continually find ways to do things better. And I'm just so proud of the three of you for sitting here tonight and having this amazing conversation and just putting your heart out there. I really appreciate it. So. Hopefully, I don't have to do, do another one. In 10 years time. We're back again. Yeah. What did yeah. you learn this time? <laughs> <laughs> did you talk to yourself? Did you whisper yourself in your ear? Or was it too much to take in? <laughs> oh. On that note, campers, I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Um, and there's been some amazing, beautiful comments coming in from Sharon and Jen. I'm just, I'm so I haven't focused on the comments too much tonight because I've just been sitting with men talking about divorce through their eyes and the lessons they've learned. And I'm just so grateful for that. Back next week, next week, I've got a beautiful panel. Uh, Sharon's on and Maria McGrath. And we're talking about suicide for women, something that I want to learn more about and understand more. So. Uh, very respectful conversation or may or may not take comments depending on how it goes because it's going to be a very intimate conversation. So like they all are. <laughs> but uh, the one thing I do love about the Camp Boy Project is how respectful it is. We sit, mm. we listen, we hear and we grow together. I think the three men on screen tonight, no matter, we're sitting here listening to each other. 
and we're experiencing our own opportunities and we're learning from each other just by sitting and listening. If I can encourage people to share their stories with the people in their life, then they will grow too. So thank you very much. Take care, campers. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, John. Thank you, Alan. Um, we'll be back next week. Now, where's that bloody button? <laughs> oh, there it is.